Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If it's your first time here, hi, my name is Jess, welcome. So as you can see by the title of today's video, we're gonna be testing out Timu Finds. So last week I shared a video unboxing and giving you guys product details and close-ups of all the items that were featured in that haul. Not all of those items are gonna be featured today because not all of the items in my last video were items that needed to be tested. But in today's video, we're gonna be testing about 11 items. And so if you do want to see whether these items are worth the money or if you're just curious to see what product I'm going to be testing out today then just keep on watching so on this table are all the items that we're gonna be testing out today so let's jump into item number one so first up is this portable juicer so this juicer is rechargeable and the charging port is back here in the back it only has one button which is this power button right here in the center so this is what it looks like assembled and this is what it looks like unassembled so this right here is the base of the juicer and then you have this compartment right here which you lock into place like so and then you have this part right here which juices the fruits and this goes directly inside like that and then this little part is actually the stopper that stops the juice from coming out right here you just pop it into place and you lift it like this with this little lever right here and then this right here is a lid which also locks into place so here's the one power button so one push turns the juicer on and then if you push it one more time it will actually start juicing so I'm gonna show you guys with nothing inside how it works whenever I push this button So that's the process and then once the juice is collected right here you just lift up this little lever of course you're gonna have a cup placed right here and then you empty out your juice and you can drink it so now i'm going to insert a clip of me using this juicer to juice some oranges and i was actually really surprised by how well this worked considering how small this is and so it does work now mine does have a crack or like a little chip right here at the end of this little spout and so that is the reason why mine kind of like spews out a little bit of juice now I don't know if that's how it arrived or if that was my mistake when cleaning it and putting it in the dishwasher if it broke it I'm not entirely sure but regardless it does still work just fine and like I said I do have a cup under here so any spewaging will be falling into the cup so that's no big deal but overall this did work really well. I was very impressed and I would say that it is worth the purchase because it's small, it works, it's portable, it's easy to store, and it's rechargeable. So next we're gonna be testing out this egg storage box and this is meant to go in the refrigerator and it stores and holds your eggs. Now I did share in my last video that I thought the quality of this product was not that good. It's a little flimsy feeling. It's also not very well made like the spacing right here in between these two pieces kind of looks a little wonky there's lots of gaps and just the overall quality is not that great but apart from that I want to see if it actually does the job of storing eggs and how well it functions so let's go ahead and test it out so this does have a pull out drawer and this is as far as it opens up now unfortunately I can't access this little part right here as of right now, but you can pull out this drawer just by giving it a good yank. And now I'm gonna fill this up with eggs. So about 15 eggs are able to fit in here. Now let's go ahead and put this drawer in here carefully. Hopefully no eggs are broken in this process. Okay, so now that the eggs are in there, realistically, if I were using this, I could use this little dial to let me know the expiration date of the eggs. That's what the purpose of this here is. Now let's open up the eggs and see how they work. Okay, so one thing that I'm most curious about is whether or not these eggs will start to roll forward once I start using up some eggs. So let's do elimination here. Let's take away some eggs and then close the drawer back up and see what happens. Okay, they did seem to roll to the front, so now let's do it again. So the eggs did seem to roll forward every time I took a row out. So that was one of my main concerns was, am I gonna be able to access the eggs that are stuck behind the part that doesn't fully come out, but they do roll. Even though this product does work, I personally still don't love the quality, but if you are looking for something that is very, very affordable, maybe you can consider this. So in short, did this egg storage organizer work? Yes, it did work. Do I recommend it? Yes and no. I think that if you're looking for something that is very, very affordable, then consider this one because, I mean, you're getting what you pay for because the quality is, again, not that great, but I mean, it works, so there's that. I just much prefer the acrylic ones from Amazon 
over these and so i think it just depends on what you're looking for and what your budget is but if you're looking for something that is low budget and works well i would consider this if you have a little bit more budget to get something a little bit better i would definitely look elsewhere so next up i have this rice dispenser here that comes with this little cup this cup does have measurements right here on this side but they are in milliliters so it's 500 milliliters 400 300 200 and 100 milliliters and so you put this cup right here you push this button and this button will then put some rice in the cup and the rice goes in here this compartment is actually quite large this was a lot bigger than i was anticipating i maybe ordered the wrong one but i thought i got the small one but this one seems to be quite big and on the lid of this container it does have that same little dial so that you can take a note of the expiration date of the rice and then this little compartment here i'm assuming is like some sort of vent i'm not really sure what this is but that's there and so now let's go ahead and test this out and see if it works so my rice is currently stored in one of these little clear tupperware containers and so i'm just going to dump all of it in here and then just start testing it out this little part right here is helpful because it tells you how much rice you have in the container. So now I'm going to put the lid back on, but now let's push the little button and see if it works. I held this button down the entire time and a good amount of rice came out. So now I'm gonna test it out by pushing the button only once and seeing how much comes out. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, so this rice dispenser does work and it looks really nice as well. It definitely looks a lot better than that little Tupperware container that I had. But the only issue for me personally is that this is too big and it does not fit in my pantry, which is where I was expecting to store this. And I really don't have a lot of counter space to work with. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep this. I might end up gifting this. But if I did have the space for it, I would 100% keep it because I love it. I like that you can just open this up put all your rice in there, close it up. This little container has a home that sits right there. So anytime that you're ready, you don't have to worry about digging for a cup to measure out how much rice you have. You can just use this, push how much rice you need, grab it, rinse it, use it. And it's easy. Everything is in one spot. And I really do like that. So did this product work? Yes, it did. Do I recommend it? Yes, I do. Next, I have this little mat right here. This is a silicone mat that goes on your car dash. And this is what the back of it looks like. It's not sticky, but I feel like it would have a good amount of grip to be able to sit on the dash of the car. And then it comes with this little phone mount. I do have to peel off this part right here and stick it here in the center. But I did get this because I wanted to obviously see if my phone can sit on here. And also, I want to be able to put my camera on here and see how well it holds and that it doesn't slip and slide. So because I am going to be using my camera, the one that I'm currently recording on, to plop it on top of this mat, I am going to be recording with my iPhone. So if there's a decrease in quality, that is why. Also, the lighting might not be that great in this next segment because the car is in my garage and my garage is dark, but I'm going to try and bring like my little Alex Earl light, as everyone likes to call it, and use that to give better lighting. So let's go ahead and test this out. So this is the dash of my car, and I didn't realize that it has like this little bump right here. It's not flat. It kind of dips down right here so i'm curious to know how this mat is going to sit on there so let's go ahead and lay it down okay so it does mold into the little curve pretty well but now my concern is i don't think there's enough space for my phone to even be able to be propped up right here because i have a phone case here that will mimic my phone because i'm currently using it to film but yeah so the phone won't even be able to be like fully upright because my dash is not big enough this is such a bummer so the second thing that i wanted to test out was whether or not i can have my camera on here and it not slip and slide but what i'm realizing is because this is not a flat surface this is not sitting on there very flatly it like most of the weight is going here towards the back and so i feel like it would just plop backwards like this and I think it's more so, again, a problem with my dash not being flat and it having this dip right here. And so I don't think it's a question of whether or not this works because I do think that this works pretty well because I was able to prop my phone up on here. It does hold the phone in place. It just doesn't fit on my dash. All in all, do I recommend? I do recommend if you have a flat dash, definitely try it out because this does work. Like I said, it can hold the phone on here vertically and it rotates this little thingy does rotate so you can spin it in any direction and it does hold it again horizontally and of course you can spin it i really do wish that this could have worked out for my car because i really do feel like i could have used it a lot which is why i got it and sadly it didn't work for my car i wonder if it works on my husband's car 
but definitely doesn't work for mine. So now we're gonna be trying this space heater that plugs into the wall, which I really like the idea of because it doesn't take up any floor space. It doesn't take up any counter space. I personally got this to use in my bathroom. I have a pretty small bathroom and when it's really cold, I want it to be nice and toasty in there, but I don't want to turn on the heat to heat up the entire house because that's just like way too much electricity. And so I thought that this would be a good solution. And I do like that this small heater does come with a remote control. It has a play pause button. It has a timer, temperature controls, and speed controls. So let's go ahead and see if this space heater actually works. So this is a wall outlet in my bathroom and honestly I'm surprised at how perfectly it fits right here. And so now I'm going to just turn on this little button right here on the side. And the moment that I did, the light turned to blue right here. So all of these are functioning buttons. So I'm gonna start by pressing the power button. And then here's the timer button and the temperature controls. Okay, so this is actually working. It's blowing really hot air. So I'm going to leave this running in here for a little bit and then check back in in about five minutes. So the little heater has been on for about five minutes and it's still pushing hot air, which is good, but I don't really feel a difference in the space. And now that I'm really thinking about it, I don't know if it's actually gonna work well for the space because I have another heater that I use and it's about like this big. I actually did a review on it here on my channel years ago and I'm still using it. It's still going strong. It's from Amazon and it's like this small. It sits right here on the counter and I turn it on for maybe about like 10 minutes I would say and it does heat up the space in a good amount of time. So I don't know if this would work for this specific scenario, but I feel like there would be scenarios where this could be helpful. Let's say for example, if you're out camping and it's chilly and you want a source of heat, I feel like you could plug this in, kind of put your hands over it for a little bit, you know, warm up within a close proximity of it. I feel like it would work, but in terms of it heating up an entire space, I feel like it could take quite a while for that to happen. And I don't know how long this can run for before it like just stops working. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna let it run for another five minutes and then we'll come back to it. So it's been another five minutes and we're kind of in the same place as we were five minutes ago. I don't really feel a huge difference in the room, but now I wanna test out the controller to see if it actually works. So it does have a timer, temperature controls, and speed control. So let's see what happens if I change the temperature. Okay, so it is working, it is changing the temperature. Now the speed. So there's two different speeds, there's low and high. And then you can control the timer by however many minutes you want. And when I push the red button, it starts counting down from 60. And I don't know if that means that it's gonna turn off in 60 seconds. So let's give it a try. I push the button and now it's counting down from 60. So. We'll be back in 55 seconds. And we're back. So that did turn off the heater. So that is what this button is for. It is a 60 second timer to turn the heater off. And so now that I basically have this running for about 10 to 15 minutes, I don't notice a huge difference. And so for that reason, I'm going to say that it does work in the regard that, you know, it does blow hot air, but it's not working for what I intended it to. So do I recommend this? Not if you're trying to heat up anything bigger than like a standard bathroom. I do think in the right circumstance and in the right scenario, this would be helpful, but what I needed it for, it didn't work. So do I recommend it? Yes and no. I truly don't know, I'll let you decide on this one. So next up we have these smart sensor lights and these lights can be stuck on any surface and they actually come off of this little thing which is really neat so you can use it as like a handheld light or you can have it as a wall light. There is a third option where it can stand like this, but honestly that doesn't work that well because this is top heavy and it always leans over. I've tried getting it to stand, but any movement will just tip it right over. And so it works best as a handheld light and as a mounted light on the wall. And so this light is actually really cool because it has three different settings. So it has the on setting, off setting, and the auto setting. The auto setting is really cool because it says here that when human activity is detected in the dark it will automatically turn on and it'll stay illuminated for 15 seconds and then automatically turn off so that's how I'm gonna be using these I'm gonna be setting them on the auto setting and that is basically how I'm gonna go about this these do come with chargers because these are rechargeable so that's nice you don't have to worry about having these connected to any sort of power source because these are rechargeable and so I got these to put in my pantry and to put in my hallway closet my hallway closet does not have a light in there and the hallway light doesn't really illuminate that closet enough and so I put two of these on the wall in my closet and they worked great I'm gonna insert a clip here of how I installed them it was super easy the back of these is actually really strong and sticky like the moment that you stick it onto whatever surface you're sticking it onto don't think that you're gonna be able to adjust it because 
I thought I would be able to turn it a little bit because mine were a little lopsided, but once this sticks onto something, it's stuck on there. This stuff is really heavy duty tape, and so keep that in mind whenever you're putting it on anything, but I love the light that it illuminates. It's like a soft, warm light, and even though it is quite dim, it does illuminate the perfect amount. I don't find it too dim or anything like that, but I think that once the battery does start to run low, they will get even dimmer, and that'll kind of give you an idea of when you need to recharge these. So it also makes me wonder how much these illuminate when they're fully charged. But right now, the way that they are is perfectly fine with me, and so I do really like how they work. I like how they look. At first, I was a little taken aback because I thought they were gonna be a dark wood color, how it is here on the box, but they are, in fact, a light wood. But they do have an option on Teamy to either get light or dark, but I don't mind it. And honestly, like they're in spaces that you can't see. They're hidden in closets. Like one of them is in the pantry. Two of them are in the hallway closet and they're out of sight, out of mind, but they work whenever I open up the closet. So that's great. I'm gonna show you guys right now. So this is the closet where the lights are. They're on each side of the wall. So when I open the door, it's not gonna be super dark because it's obviously daylight, but at night it does get pretty dark in here. So this is what it looks like right now. The lights haven't turned on because they haven't detected any sort of like human activity but once i like walk in here they basically like turn on do you see how like it's illuminating a little bit i don't know if you can pick it up on camera but it looks quite nice and it does light up a good amount so there's one light and here's the other one i love the warm lighting it makes it feel so nice and cozy i feel like these would be great if you put them in like a bedroom if you want a little bit of like an ambient lighting maybe on top of your nightstand if you don't have lamps i feel like they would be a good source of like soft lighting so do these smart sensor lights actually work yes they do they work really well i was actually quite surprised and i like how again i can take them off and use them to like walk around the room if there's like a power outage or something i could definitely use them for that and do I recommend them? Yes, I do. So next up I have this trash bin with a lid that opens up automatically. I did have to put two AA batteries in this trash can in order for it to work, but you basically just wave your hand over it and it opens automatically and it closes automatically as well. So you can use your hand, you can use your foot, you can use your knee, basically any sort of movement that it senses, it will open up the trash can and it does it relatively quick, which I do like. So I'm gonna remove the lid really quick to show you guys where the batteries go. So the batteries go right here and this is the little motor of the trash bin that controls like the sensors and stuff. And the actual size of the trash bin is a good size. You can put it in your bathroom, you can put it in the office. So does the trash can actually work? Yes, it does. Okay, so now do I recommend this trash bin I do recommend it because it's a good size it can fit again in a bathroom in an office in a bedroom it actually works and it's really lightweight as well like extremely lightweight the only thing that's really giving this trash bin any weight is the motor and the batteries if it weren't for that this thing would be as light as a feather so next up I have this multi-tool that is in this little cylinder case this cylinder case is so small compact and I can store it so easily and it has so many attachments so the way that you open it is it pops pops open like so and it rolls open like this so whenever it's on a flat surface you have access to everything in here and when you do close it it clicks into place that way it doesn't accidentally like fly open and any of the things come out so when I first saw this in my last video I didn't find a standard size Phillips but once I actually took the time to go through every single one of these I did find it or well, at least one that's the closest to it and that actually works because I did use it around my house and I'll insert video of all the things that I like tightened and it actually worked really well. Even the flat tip screwdriver worked well. I used it to tighten up all the little light switches and outlets around my house and there are just so many different sized attachments on here. There's even one that I used to tighten the screw on my sunglasses and as a matter of fact, one of the screws on the camera that I'm currently using just so happened to fall off and so I'm definitely gonna be using this tool to do it. As a matter of fact, I should show you. I'm gonna record on my iPhone again, so don't mind the decrease in quality, but let me show you guys how this works. Okay, so I just realized that I have two screws missing right here and I only have one of them. So at least there's that, let me grab it. Okay, so here's the screw. It is the tiniest little thing. And now I'm gonna try and find a tool in that little tool kit that is small enough for this. I've literally never encountered a screw so small, but we're gonna try and put it back on. Okay, let's see if this one works. Okay, I think this one might actually work. I also like how it has like the name on it and everything is labeled on here. So storing them and putting them away is gonna be really easy. So I'm just gonna attach this on here and it's magnetic so it's not gonna fall off. 
and there it goes, it's back on there. So does this toolkit actually work? Yes, it does. Do I recommend it? I do, because it's actually really handy and it's super small, easy to store, and if you ever need any screw or anything like that, it's probably in here. So next up we have the Smooth Sailing Anti-Gravity Humidifier. This humidifier actually has a really cool and modern look to it. It doesn't look like your traditional humidifier, which I think is cool. That way if you wanted to actually like display it on a table or on a shelf and make it look like a piece of art, you definitely could because it looks super modern, does it not? Like, I wouldn't think this is a humidifier if I saw it personally. But it comes with a USB cable. Now I just need to plug it into the wall and let's test this out and see if it actually works. So to open it up, you just twist this bottom part open like so and you fill this up with water. The top of this also has three buttons right here. This M, the power button, and a plus button. I think that this might be a clock. So let's turn on the power button. It starts working automatically, which is cool. So now let's see when the fog will start to come up. On camera, the light is looking a little weird, but I will say that it actually does look like that in real life. So these buttons up here control the time, and I will say that looking at this is really trippy. Like, how is it doing that? So did the humidifier actually work? Yes, it did work. I thought it was really cool. I've never seen any sort of like anti-gravity kind of mechanism like that. So that was really fascinating. Also, the design is really cool as well. And the humidifying aspect of it does work. The mist is very gentle. And I think that if I let it run a little bit longer, it would get a little bit more strong. And so overall, does the actual humidifier work? Yes, it does work. Do I recommend it? I think that if you're in need of a cool looking humidifier, one that has a clock and one that has like a really cool little party trick with the whole anti-gravity of it all, I would recommend it. But for me personally, I didn't really need this. I think this was sent to me like on accident or something. And so I don't really have a use for it, but it is really cool. So next up we have this 100 foot LED strip lights and it comes with a remote control, which has tons of different settings on it. It comes with this little cube, which I suspect is where you connect the lights and then you connect the other side to the power. It comes with the power cable and the two bundles of LED lights. So I'm not actually gonna be unraveling these because I do plan to use these in the game room once we like make that space over because we just finished giving our bedroom a whole makeover. And so the game room is next. And so when that time does come is when I'm going to unravel these and like put them up. But for now, I'm just gonna plug them in and see if they actually work and also test out the remote control. So this remote does come with the battery, which is nice. I don't have to worry about finding a battery for it. Now, both ends of the LED strips go plugged into this little square. So I just plugged them in and they're working just fine. So now we're gonna use a remote control and see if this works. So it has an on and off button here, so let's turn them off. Okay, that worked great. Let's turn them on. That worked too. Now let's test out all the buttons and just see if it all works out. So these buttons up here control the dimness, which I do like that they're dimmable. And then we have all these different color options. So these two buttons are pretty much the same. I wanna see if there's a difference. Okay, there is a difference. So this is like purple and this is like a lilac color. There's also two blue buttons here. Okay, so there's like different shades of blue and stuff. I like this, that it's not like all just generic colors. There's like different hues of each color. All right, so now let's see what this jump three button is. All right, so it's like a little rave going on. Jump seven looks like that. Pretty similar to jump three. And then there's a fade button. This is fade three, which I really like. There's fade seven. Okay, this seems to fade a little bit faster. So if I push the flash button and the slow button, it slows down the flashes. And then if I put quick, it'll quicken up the flashes. Okay, that's super cool. And there's four buttons down here at the bottom row that kind of look like they have music bars. And I wonder if these sync with music. So it does have a music interface, which means that whenever you play music, the lights will go with the music, but you do need to download an app to be able to do that. To download the app, you just scan this QR code and it takes you to the app and you just download it. It has two stars, which is not good. So I'm not super hopeful that it's gonna be a very good app. Okay, so in the app, I thought that I was gonna be able to play like my own kind of music, kind of link it to like Spotify and play music and have it like sync up to the lights. But it only gives me like four songs that I can choose from and they're all songs that I've never heard of. And so I definitely don't recommend getting the app. I say just use the remote and save yourself all of this mess. Okay, so in conclusion, do the lights work? Yes, they do. Do I recommend them? I do. Do I recommend downloading the app and doing all that nonsense that it says to do on the user manual? No, I don't. Don't download the app, but the lights work. And the last thing that I have is this right here, which is a three-stage smart battery charger. Now I'm gonna be completely transparent. 
I didn't order this, my husband ordered this, and so I genuinely don't know how to even work this or like how to use it, but I'm gonna plug it in and see if it actually starts because we wanna make sure that it actually works. Okay, so it does have power, as you can see, and it has a car option, a GM option, moto option, and that's it. Now, how do I actually start this? I'm not sure, but it does have a user manual in here that will probably tell me exactly how to use this, but because I don't have anything to charge, like a car or an ATV or anything like that at the moment, I'm not gonna be able to test this out, but just know that it actually did turn on and I think that's a win. And that, you guys, wraps up the end of this video. Comment down below which of these items you're most interested in, and if you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on the bell notification, that way you are notified every time I upload a brand new video. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate you so, so much, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.